Hornby Railways 28th edition 1982 catalogue, OO scale. Let's have a look what's in this one. Oh, look at that. That looks very real. A lot of black. It's a bit of play. Oh, yes. Now, this is very wordy, but this is very much in the style of the. Oh, look. Look. See that? That's not its impression. It's not even a photograph of a, of, a, of a model of it or a prototype. I dropped that in in a few places. The graphic design on this one is a bit, um, oh, it's just too busy. I, I can't enjoy this one. I don't like the photography particularly. I'm not massively um, impressed with the layout or the look. It's, it, it's kind of looking magazine-y. But I don't know, the colours aren't great on it either. But hey, that aside, let's see what you think. So this gives you an idea, the different track packs, B, C, D, E, various things you can do. So the one I'm building at the moment is a variation on this. So there you go, you've got the different buildings going in and how you can put them together. Locos, the fascination of the footprint. So what they've gone for here again is something very readable. There you go, a nice bit of steam in there. So it's it's one you want to read, but here's where it gets a bit heavy. So you've got this dark page, you've got lots of white text, which is never the nicest to read. Heavy boxing around the um, images of the locomotives. Look at this. Available spring oh, available spring 1982. So it's not even ready yet. King Henry VIII, so I'm not one of them. Duke of Sutherland. Ha ha ha. It's all very, very dark. Here you go, some Duchess class in green. So after they were taken on by British Rail. And my dad's got one of those in the old Hornby 003 railers. It's quite nice. Real smoke. Look at that from 1970s font. That just makes you th think of Dallas or something like that. But hey, it looks good with the smoke. Oh, I've got one of those as well. Ah, I have to stick some fags in the chimney because I doubt the uh, the oil will work. <laughs> Look at that. Loads of these. Here we go for that horrible font again. Telling you about the wheel arrangements. Now that looks nice, that LNER Seagull blue one. It's a lovely uh, looking thing. Now these are ugly. That's the first steam train I ever saw in the wild, as it were. And uh, Tangmere, I think, the one I saw. Not the best looking thing. There we go. So you've got all your catalogue shots again. Again, that heavy bordering. And then over here, got both of those. But. Um, the photography just doesn't bring anything to it. I mean, that's quite nice as a, as a sort of light layout shot, but it doesn't really appeal. Now, your questions answered. Hornby receives a large number of letters from members of the public commenting on the products and making suggestions and criticism. Selection of extracts from such letters is reproduced here with the replays. Well, sir, I'm very pleased to have one of your Battle of Britain locomotives. I think it is a pity that you only do this model in SR livery, since, after all, it spent the great majority of its working life at BR Green, and my layout is set in about 1960. Okay. But I've noticed that you missed out the steam pipes from the boiler to the cylinders. Is there any particular reason for this? As a died in the wool LNER enthusiast, I am very pleased with your range of locomotives, my layout. But may I ask you why you only supply alternative names and numbers for the B17 class? That was a super idea. We particularly like the, the sight of smoke coming from the chimney of our LMS compound loco. Why don't you add this feature to all the others? It would make them far more realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody added it to my, my Triumph Spitfire, my 1973 Triumph Spitfire, behind the dash. Lucas Electrics were responsible for the smoke that time. Oops, that cost me a few quid. I was surprised to see that with all the gadgets you reproduced on your model of the APT, you have apparently forgotten to provide doors for the passengers to get in and out. 
<laughs> that is probably the design of the original train. Not so, PRM. If you look very closely at a driving trailer on the right side, looking towards the nose and at the opposite end from the nose, you'll see there's a faint indication of the door outline. There's even the running bark. <laughs> Dear Hornby, my boyfriend has suddenly got all fanatical and autistic about, about model railway trains, don't you know? And I'm, I'm starting to get a bit concerned that he's turning into either his younger self or my father. What could I possibly do? Dear Alison, cook him a steak, put on some sexy underwear and hide his power controller. <laughs> <laughs> she could slap me if I show her this one, but to be honest, she'll never get five and a half minutes into a into a video about train sets. So here we go. So you got your intercity special tra uh, special pack. So you got your APT and your intercity one two five. God, we all knew about them. They were just the greatest thing. And there's your APT, and there's your intercity one two five. So a little bit more streamlined. Oh, I don't know. There you go. There's, there's Ronnie Biggs and uh, Buster Collins. <laughs> right, here we go. Some more, some more. I mean, it's all very nice. The photographs are, f are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They just don't, they don't evoke anything in this particular catalogue. Now, this is quite nice. Laying out the coaches like that. Except they're really small. There you go. Your side views. This is like sort of Leviticus in the Bible, you know. It's the bit that's just interminably long and all very samey. <gasps> is it Leviticus? I don't know. I can't remember. It's a long time since I read it. There you go. Look at that train set. This is this is this is um, a photograph of somebody's toy box, I think. <laughs> Dear me, you can tell it's like half four in the morning, can't you? And I'm starting to lose it. So here we go, the wagons, the wagons. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't look like that little polo wagon. <laughs> it doesn't appeal. It's trying to be too many things. It's trying to be a magazine. It's trying to be dark and moody and mysterious. And it's trying to show the catalogue images. I, I don't think it works. So electronic power and control and the zero one system. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know what that all means. Then the mimic diagram. Yeah, there's a lot of pages that they've put onto that. You know, they, they want to push the zero one control system. Track plus. Yeah. Ombi's new express points are designed to smooth out the violent sideways movements that can occur when a train is negotiating at speed of crossover or junction constructed with points of a normal radius. As with all Hornby points, they are self-isolating and supplied for hand operation but can be converted for electric remote control by the addition of an R663 point remote control set. To be honest, the amount of times my trains derailed over the points is probably 99% of the times that they've derailed, derailed generally. So here we go, we've got level crossings, double level crossing. You know, you're starting to see barriers and, and lights being added to them instead of the old standard sort. Now where I live, out in the, the, the depths of, of darkest Peru, i.e. Suffolk and Norfolk, we still have both sorts of barriers kicking around. Track. Getting off the carpet. Many Hornby train sets start their working lives on the living room carpet. Yeah, mine did. The excitement of opening up the pack and wanting to see the train go immediately is understandable, but maybe disadvantage, dis, disadvantageous, disadvantage, may be problematic in the longer run. A carpet is a poor surface for track. Don't we know it? And look, look, look at that. Dogs. Now, I don't know if any of you seen the video of Pig and Wurzel when I showed Alison the trains when I, when I first put on a baseboard. But Pig jumped onto my knee, jumped on the train set and attacked them. <laughs> it's quite funny, really. All right, how to, how to manufacture something. So hinged over bed, that's quite a good idea. Ceiling or roof. 
slide behind furniture or wall unit, fold down onto trestle or table. Stations, sets and accessories. Now this, as soon as you get up close, you can see that that is not a photograph. That is an artist's rendition of the building. So they'd obviously come out with the new finish on these. Hornby's latest technology has moved into the Stone Age. The ingenious printing methods used for decorating and injection mouldings have been harnessed to simulate the effect of stonework in a most realistic manner. I shall allow you to judge for yourself on that one. So, still going with the old station hold, what goes back to the old trying days. Here we go, these are all pictures blended in onto the photographs. I really do. I've got to say, I've never actually seen these um, in the flesh. I've only ever seen the, the ones that you see as standard. I don't know if this was something that took off or whether it was short-lived or what. But, I oh, look horrible to me. Look rubbish. Oh, look at that. Look at that loading bay. Available autumn 1982. A good shed, summer 82. Water tower, summer 82. Signal box, summer 82. Engine shed, summer 82. So this is predating it. Here we go, we've got various bridges, viaducts, plinths, that horrible tunnel. Come on, seriously. I think James Cook had one of those. Ah, Dunster Station. So I quite like that, I quite like the look of that. The GWR Station Kit. The model is an accurate, re accurate representation of Dunster Station in Somerset. There are over 70 pre-coloured parts and stonework finish is applied by means of self-adhesive labels. The platform base clips to R460 straight platform sections or R464 platform ramps. Very nice, very nice. And yeah, the GWR footbridge kit as well. The station box. Wow. Accessories. Not going to comment about the turntable, you already know that. The operating all set signals look at that, there's so many options for signals. And to be honest, as much as I read about them, I still haven't got the faintest idea how to attach signals to set properly. And again, this this catalog has been, been privately printed for Beatties and London and everywhere else. So that is your 1982. 28th edition catalogue.